Coin from Mill Wheel Show Clinics, and today we're going to be doing a webinar for showmanship judges. In 2011, the Purebred Dairy Cattle Association uh, looked at the showmanship rules and tried to get them all consistent so that judges and youth alike were doing the same thing. In 2016, we looked at them again and decided we needed to make a few more small changes. And so today, what we're gonna do is talk about what you as a judge should be looking for in your showman. Also, we're going to be giving a few tips for showmen as well as we go through the day. So one of the things that's really important is that youth across the country have been learning these new rules and, and new ideas, and judges haven't quite caught up to that. So today, hopefully, you'll get a few pointers um, as to what you're looking for as a showmanship judge on every level, whether you're judging a county fair, uh, a local regional show, or a national showmanship contest. There's three important things to remember for showmanship. The first and most important is to make your heifer look as good as she can at all times. So when I'm judging a showmanship class and I see some of the youth have done exactly what we wanted and made a few little mistakes, the most important thing, I'll just stop and look around the ring and what heifer looks the best. The second important part of showmanship is to know the showmanship rules and guidelines. For example, don't go in the show ring with a cell phone in your pocket. It's a serious discrimination, you're out. So judges, you should be looking for that. Showmen, remember to leave your cell phones in the barn. But there are certain guidelines that we'll talk about today as we go along that you're looking for as a judge. And third, we want kids to have fun when they're in the show ring. So if you see a showman coming in and they're nervous or anxious or even crying, it's your job as a judge to go ahead and put them at ease when they come into the ring. So we're going to break this down into a couple different things. First is youth entering the ring. Secondly, close inspection. Third, your first line. And fourth, the final lineup. And we'll be giving tips both for showmen and showmanship judges as we go along. So judges, as your showmen are coming into the ring, you should be centrally located in the middle of the show ring so that you can observe every person coming into the ring. And here are the things you're looking for when they come in the ring. First of all, does the halter fit correctly? It should be halfway between the nostrils and the eyes. And the reason for that is because you want them to... Um, that's where you have the most control of your heifer. If it's too low on their nose, the heifers are sensitive. If it's too high, they're, they're not sensitive enough. So you want that halter halfway between the nostrils and the eyes. You want to also make sure that that snap is to the outside of the halter. And if a showman comes in the ring without that, with the snap to the inside, go ahead and go over and move that around and that will help the showman as they um, go around the ring. You're looking for showmen to walk, come in the ring walking straight forward at an efficient pace. So that's a pace that moves everyone into the class as quickly and efficiently as possible, following rule number one, keeping their heifer looking as good as she can possibly look. So um, if a heifer comes in, if, if one person comes in and there's a huge space because another showman is walking slowly, then th that showman needs to be penalized a few points because that is inconsiderate to the people behind them. Everyone needs to move in, and here's why. The first person in the ring is being compared to the last person in the ring, and the quicker everyone gets in there, the more efficient it is for the judge to begin evaluation. You're looking for showmen who look natural doing it. Every showman should be showing with their left hand in the halter, and pulling throat with their right hand. As you can see, Peyton here has it held exactly the way we want it done. She's got her halter rolled up nice and neat. She's holding onto the chain with her left hand fingers, and she has that excess on the, on the thumb, and she's pulling throat as she's coming into the ring. So as a judge, I'm watching her come into the ring. She's walking along with her feet going straight forward. She's not going sideways. She's not walking sideways, she's not walking backwards. You'll also notice our showmen are walking in front of our heifers. They're walking in front of the heifer's nose, and that's where we want to be. We are leading heifers. We're not pushing heads along, we're leading heifers. So we walk in front of their nose as we, they come into the ring. 
Make sure that they're not blocking at the shoulder. One of the things that I'm going to talk about several times in this video is uh, making your heifer be the silhouette. Think of a professional picture, and we're going to talk about this when we talk about feet placement. In a professional picture, all we see is the silhouette of the heifer. And that's what we want to present in showmanship as well. So we don't want to be walking at the shoulder when we come in the ring. And we don't want to be standing in the middle of the heifer uh, as we, when we do our close inspection. So again, if our showmen want to move a little bit. So once our last showman enters the ring, and Maddie is our last showman today, all the showmen should turn around and walk backwards. Nice job, you guys. Walk backwards. So I'm going to have you guys stop and set your heifers up. Now, when they set their heifers up, the back leg towards the judge is back. You want to set your heifer up, and you want to do the back legs first. Don't worry about the front feet until the back legs are set up. So. We're looking at heifers and we're making them appear as long as they can. And that goes back to that professional picture. You think of a professional picture of a heifer, the back leg towards the camera is back. The front legs are nearly parallel and maybe just a little bit offset. Be sure to set your back legs up first and then go ahead and move the front legs where you need them to go. When you move front legs, you're going to do it one of two ways. The best way is to do it with from the halter and with your hand on the shoulder, moving with that little bit of pressure. The second way to do it is to move it, move it by using your feet. And maybe we could have Peyton just demonstrate that right now. Your heifer looks very good though, Peyton. But yep, just step right in and move the foot. Very nice. You'll notice she did it really easily without a lot of um, reaching or anything like that. So, as a judge, what you're looking for right now is who set their heifers up the best. It doesn't need to be, um, take a little step, Hadley. It doesn't need to be quick, 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 but if they've practiced at home, the heifers should just step right into that position. And then it's time for close inspection. So, as a judge, you're going to pick who you're going to start with, maybe the first person in the ring, maybe the last person, whoever you'd like, and you're going to look at their heifer, and as you're looking at their heifer, you're evaluating it for, do they have the heifer set up correctly? Is the head and neck and nose straight? Um, does the heifer look as good as she can look? Maddie's making a great mistake right now. Always move your heifer forward to set them up. So judges, you're doing close inspection. All your heifers have been stopped and set up. You're going to pick your first person that you're going to evaluate. Come and look at the heifer. Notice that the showman has the head and neck straight. They're not pulling that nose away. When the judge walks around the front of the heifer, the showman should turn and look right directly at the judge. What I'm doing right now is evaluating the front end of the heifer. And so that's what we want to uh, be looking at when we come to the front. Then the judge is going to walk around the other side, and as I walk around the other side, the showman is going to go ahead and take half a step ahead. So when you come around to this side, the showman is going to go ahead and take that half step forward so that they uh, present their animal with the leg closest to the judge back. She actually looks pretty good, Maddie. I like that. So that's your first close inspection, and then you're going to move on to your second person and go ahead and do that close inspection with this person as well. So remember, you're going to look at the heifer on this side, walk around the front, and the showman will turn and look right at you and present that front end of the heifer to you. She has the nose straight. Nose straight, good girl. The nose straight, and as I walk to the other side, she's just gonna move half a step ahead. After you have evaluated two, three, four heifers, depending on the size of your class, then you want to ask everyone to move again. You don't want to make these heifers or the showmen stand here for a long time while you evaluate the entire class. Also, you'll notice I didn't ask a question. Here's what I feel about questions in the show ring. If you have five great showmen, like we have in this class right now, you're going to have to separate them somehow. 
and you might want to ask a question. Questions should include, for younger people, the birth date of their animal and the sire of their animal. An important question for every showman is, what class are you in? So for example, the class is different than the birth date. The birth date is 3222. The class is spring heifer class. Spring heifer calf class. And the reason for that is when you're in the barn and they call the spring heifer calves, if you don't know you have a spring heifer calf, you're going to miss your class. So that's an important question to know. Uh, for my older youth, I'll ask, what percent protein do you feed? Uh, how much do you feed? Some of those feeding questions that older youth should really know the answer to how many pounds of grain they feed and what percent protein it is. Only to break ties. Do not ask open-ended questions like, tell me about your heifer. They're in showmanship to show their heifer, not to tell you the whole pedigree of them, and it takes way too long. So once you've done that close inspection on two or three heifers, you ask your heifers to move again. One of the things I touched on early in the class was uh, coming in the ring. And when they come in the ring and for close inspection and throughout the class, you want to have five feet of space between you and the heifer in front of you and five feet of space from the side. And the reason for that is so that you have room to move when you need to set your heifer up. And you have to have five feet from the outside of the ring, from the rail, from the bleachers, whatever, because the judge has to be able to get around your heifer and you don't want to step on somebody sitting in the front row of the bleachers. We're going to ask our group to stop and sit up again. So close inspection, but just to cut, cover a few points. You're looking for the animal that's set up the best. It doesn't have to be quick. It has to be efficient and who has their heifer the most balanced. You're going to evaluate two or three heifers by walking around the front of the showman, looking at the other side and making sure the showman knows to switch feet as you go to the other side. And then you're going to move them once you've done three or four so that everybody has that other opportunity to set up. Because no matter how well you've broken heifer to lead, you're probably gonna have days where they're just not behaving exactly as you want. So you give that showman another opportunity to do it. So the next phase will be to make your first line. It's really important to make two lines in your showmanship class because the part of the scorecard is how people come into line. So here's what we're looking for when they come into line. They do not turn around and put their right hand in the halter and run to the line. They use that same pace they use to efficiently move into the line. So we're going to start pulling our showman in. Maddie, just stop your heifer. And Hadley come around second. And you guys come along and follow into line. So you'll notice that our showmen are walking at a nice, efficient pace. They have the head up. They're walking along and getting themselves into the line so that they don't miss a spot. When they come into the line, they need this much space to get in. You need the, work, the space you need to work. And Dylan's bringing his heifer around, so you don't want to leave too much space. You don't want to be too close to the heifer ahead of you. Really nice. When our showmen line up, judges, you want to ask them to line up shoulder to shoulder. And Maddie, bring your heifer in. You want them to line up shoulder to shoulder and be in a nice straight line. Now, here's where we're going to talk about an important rule change. The heifers on the outside of the line have the outside leg back. The heifers in the middle of the line are just going to get their heifers set up really, really well, the showman in the middle of the line. And here's why. As a showmanship judge, the only two heifers that we can see that length of heifer on are the two heifers on the outside of the line. So the outside leg on the outside heifers is back. Both of our showmen have done that this morning. In the center of the line, we have three heifers that are set up well. Tyler, I'm going to have you move your your legs a little bit. She's a little bit stretchy. Um, so what, what they're doing when they come into line is just making sure it doesn't matter which leg is forward 
which leg is back. And we never want to ask showmen to move feet in line. They might need to move feet because their heifer isn't quite set up the way you want it to be, but they do not have to move the feet as the judge walks from one end to the other. And here's why. Go back to rule number one. Once you get your heifer looking as good as she can possibly look, then you don't need to keep moving them. As, as adult showmen standing in line at the World Dairy Expo, once we get those heifers set up the way we want them to look, we don't move their feet. So we don't expect our young showmen to do that either. They, you'll notice Dylan's working to get his heifer set up the way he wants her to look. Ah, looks good, Dylan. Just move that one front foot forward. Um, you, you just want them to get their heifers look as good as they can possibly look. Tyler, I'm going to have you take her around out of the line and come around and come back in just so you can keep her in line. We want the showmen to keep their heifers in line as much as they possibly can. The other part of evaluation of the youth of line is coming to the front of the line. And in a type show, you come to the front of the line and evaluate those front ends of the heifers, the width of chest, how they set their feet down, those kinds of things. So that's what we're looking for in showmanship as well. So we want our showman to very naturally turn and look at the judge. You'll notice that Dylan's working on his heifer. That's okay. As the judge, I know what he's doing. He's, he's not in front of his heifer, but he's working on what he needs her to do. Our showmen have turned. Their toes are facing the judge. That's what we're looking for. They're not um, reaching from the back. Do one of you ladies, Hadley, maybe could you go like this one time back at the back of, you know no don't move don't move your heifer but just step back and go like this with your heifer one time yeah there you go you don't need to overdo this you just need to be look natural and calm cool and collect keep your heifer's head up as our showmen are doing here and be looking at the judge look the judge right in the eye and say i have the winner as judges we're looking for that confident show person. Another thing I want to quick talk about right here is showmen, we're not looking for smiles all the time in the show ring. Judges, please don't ask showmen to smile all the time in the show ring. It doesn't look natural. This, our showmen right now look really good um, professional as they're standing here presenting the front end. You don't need to go to the other side of your heifer Judges don't ask showmen to go the other side of the heifer as you walk down the line. So you want to have a nice, natural look to what you're doing in front of the heifers. It's time to make our final line. Here's an important thing. As the judge, don't move yet, pulls you out of the line, you want to go ahead and move right out. I can't see you as the judge. I can't see you walking along the front of the line, and I'm focusing on who I'm pulling out next. So you go ahead and get yourself out of the line to the other end, and then when you get to the end of the line, you want to um, slow down again. So go ahead and take your heifer and your heifer and your heifer. Good. And move right along to the end of the line, and when you get down there where I can see you again, you're going to turn around and walk backwards again. This is for all the marbles. This is where I'm going to make my final decisions on, on who's going to be my, my winner. This is for a type class or a showmanship class. And you can keep walking right along. Keep walking that way. So now you're going to turn around and walk backwards again and make your heifer look absolutely as good as she can. And here's the one place in the class where you're not going to leave five feet of space. You're going to stay right behind that heifer in front of you because you want to give yourself all the options to move up if you're, if you're right there behind them. Great job, Dylan. And so you're moving your heifer looking, looking good as, as good as she can. And go ahead, and we're going to make our final line there. Don't leave a space, and, and don't go too slow, because you'll, you, you'll lose a space. So 
just to kind of wrap this all up for our judges. So again, if you're if you're kind of stuck on what what am I going to do, you know, how am I going to separate this showman from that showman from that showman? Just stop your class and say which heifer looks the best, and that's your top showman. Some of the things that um, you know, I kind of take for granted people know, make sure that in a showmanship class, your showmanship winners have on a white shirt, white pants, a belt, um, good and good boots. Um, the white is a tribute uh, to our heritage in, in the olden days. They used to milk cows in white smocks and white clothes, thinking that it kept the milk cleaner. And so that's why we wear white in the show ring, and that's what should be worn in my opinion, it should always be worn in the show ring, but for sure in showmanship. So be sure that the winner of your class and the top three or four showmen have on white clothes. Um, it's, every one of the rule changes works to rule number one, making your heifer look as good as she can. If we could teach every single person who steps in a show ring these exact same rules, everyone's heifer would look great all the time. So remember, you're looking for a silhouette. You're looking for someone who keeps the head and neck nice and straight. They're not pulling the nose to the side. They're not shortening their heifer by doing that. You're looking for someone who keeps the top up. You'll notice some of our showmen worked a little bit to keep those tops up on their heifers, their rumps flat. Don't overwork that. One of the important things I wanna to say too to judges is, if you see someone struggling, go help them. Especially if they come in and their halter's a little too big, you can hop over and help them make that uh, halter a little bit shorter. Um, if, they are, if they need some help just controlling the heifer, you as a judge can go do that. Lots of times when I'm judging eight, nine, ten year olds and I walk to the front of the class, uh, they don't turn and look at me. So I'll say, okay, everyone put your toes towards me and everyone will turn and look at you. Take the opportunity when you're judging to teach as well. So I want to thank our um, showman today, uh, and I want to thank Bova News for doing this showmanship judges clinic. Please, if you have questions and um, want to know things, we're welcome. We're open to those questions. So thank you very much.